everybody and welcome to another episode of Reviews from Hell. I'm your host AJ and I'm joined always by my co-host Steve. And yeah. tonight we're going to be doing something a little bit different. We're going to be reviewing the new Marvel Sony Spider-Verse movie Morbius. And a lot of people are probably going to be like, well, why is this on Infamous Horrors at all? It's not really horror. It's in the Sony Spider-Verse but after all, they are trying to market it as a 90s genre film, I feel like. This had, when I saw it, that's what I thought immediately. Like, this probably could have been made in the 90s, and if it was, it probably would have been rated R instead of the typical PG-13 we are getting in these Marvel crossover films now. And that was one of my first thoughts after leaving the theater. Steve, what were some of your thoughts when you saw this? Because you enjoyed it a lot more than I did, I think. Well, I absolutely loved it. And um, the more I thought about it, the more I liked it. I know it's really, um, it's, the critics really uh, uh, drug this movie out and beat the shit but out of it. But they typically do that with the Sony or licensed by Marvel, any studio, really, that's not Disney. Look, well, well like whether people like the movie or don't like the movie, it, do it doesn't matter to me, but there was a concerted, it brought out this ugly side of Twitter and social media uh, to where there was a concerted disingenuous effort to either shit on the movie from one group of people. And then you had another group of delusional cultists who wanted to praise the movie and pretend it's amazing because Jared Leto's in it, and he didn't get a and fair shake. Gibson, too. It was really stupid. Um, so the whole discourse around Morbius is what people will remember more than they will remember this movie in the end of the day. And I think that's unfortunate uh, because I do think it's a horror movie. I think it's very appropriate for Reviews from Hell to cover it. And I think that, you know, the side of Marvel Comics, that I'm a much bigger DC fan, but the side of Marvel Comics... I am, too. Satana, Man Thing, Morbius, um, and some others that was the more kind of uh, horror. The darker horror, side, yeah. Of, yeah, of Marvel. It looks like that's where Sony's going. I love. I think that both the Venom movies were really fun monster romps, and this um, doesn't have exactly that same type of tone, but it looks like it fits in that universe. This is a, this plays it straight. This is a. This is a weird uh and it doesn't feel like a superhero film and it's really not i mean morbius is an anti-hero um in the yeah. 90s he's had a lot of different iterations in the 70s he was a little more silly and operatic and in the 90s he and was that's very what a lot of people don't realize about these comic book characters too they have a whole lot of different iterations like sure. i was talking to sam from infamous horrors as well mm -hmm. and he's like venom is supposed to be like a hard arm waiting like horror film no, it's really not, because if you look at the iterations in the comics, he is really silly, like how Tom Hardy plays him in the films, too. Well, there's just so many different interpretations. I don't think there is a right or a wrong, and I think that looking for comic accuracy as an adaptation is the same as shaking your fist at the sky and, and saying, it's not like the book, so it's bad. And then it's what would be the point of adapting it on screen if it was it's exactly an like the book? It is, yeah, it's, it's an adaptation, which means that they're, you know, I, I'm not going to explain adaptation. Hopefully people are still with us there. But and we're not talking about the Nicolas Cage movie either. Yeah, sure. It, but it, the, the, I was saying in the 70s, Morbius was very kind of uh, large, uh, bigger and sillier and more operatic. And then in the 90s, he was very much like a goth and much more kind of something like the, maybe like the crow isn't the best example, yeah. but something of its time more. And this is uh, he's definitely um, Leto gives a very grounded performance here. Um, it's very much like I said, this movie plays it straight and um, it, it is a, it's, you know, I'm not the, and it, it does, like you said, it harkens back to the type of comic book movie that I was used to seeing in my early teens, uh, for better or worse. Yeah, it, it felt like a 90 film to me. Yeah, it definitely yeah. doesn't feel anything like the MCU. Um, and, you know, I... I liked it. Um, I think that um, it, Matt Smith is fantastic, and I think that the chemistry between Jared Leto, as much as I'm not a really big fan of vampire versus vampire stories, um, they're not my favorite 
type of vampire movies. And that's what this is. This is a uh, vampire, uh, a good guy versus it's like two flip sides of the same coin. We've seen that type of thing before. There's, there's not much new here, but what's cool about it is, is that it does lean into this more kind of like um, fantastical, spooky side of Marvel that we haven't really seen yet. And I hope that they keep going down that road. Um, the only things that, the things that didn't necessarily work for me the most was the MCU connections. When they, when they, when they With bring the Vulture Vulcan, and everything at the end. Yeah. I don't care about that. It doesn't really make that much sense to me as to why he would even team up with Vulture. It just. Especially when this was filmed like way before No Way Home and only came out. Because let's not. They had to make adjustments. This, to had more, this had more schedule changes than the new mutants ever had. Yeah, everybody forget. This was supposed to come out, I think, in May of 2020. And because of the pandemic, and I think that's also part of the problem with the reception, is it's not a... A lot of people uh, may have lost interest in it. Yeah, and it's just, you can only drag something out for so long before, if it's not amazing, people are going to hate it, I feel like. You can't you can't just keep... And I don't think the marketing was especially well for this movie. No, uh, and with it being a comic book movie that's released in the first quarter of the year, like right before the summer kicks off too... That's usually oh, yeah. not a good sign for marketing from any studio unless it's Disney or the MCU. No, I, they just sat on this movie and they can't. I don't know what exactly they were expecting uh, uh, to sit on this movie that long. I actually think that this, I understand it had a huge budget, but I think if you would have maybe done like a same day VOD theatrical release or something, I think a lot of people may view it uh, differently, in a, yeah. In a better light. Um, so, you know, there is the Jared Leto-ness of it all. Jared Leto has become one of the most polarizing leading men in Hollywood. Um, a lot of people fucking hate Jared Leto. Just for uh, me and Jared Leto, too. They hate, huh? <laughs> they hate him just from the fact he was Jared Leto, too. Oh, people just, he is one of those guys that is... He me is, and my he dad is, personally love his acting ability, but he's a I'm very looking, there's like... He's a very individual. And he does a lot of things that a lot of people makes them roll their eyes. Like, for instance, Daniel Espinoza, uh, the director of this movie, uh, uh, he, he gave an interview recently where he was talking about Jared's method and about how they were worried for Jared. And he was never out of character for it. He's yeah. still, because the character of Michael Morbius, just a quick, uh, he plays a scientist who is brilliant and he was an orphan. He was, he was raised... Uh, in an orphanage, and they send him, they realize he was brilliant early on. They send him off to study. We flash forward, and he he is a Nobel Prize winner, I think. And yeah. um, he has a uh, I can't remember what the disease is now, but he uh, do you remember what the disease? Something wrong with his spine or his blood? I think I can't remember. I'm sorry, but he he is very much like <laughs> almost like a. Um, it's it, it's a hand. He, uh, gosh, I don't want to say the wrong thing here, but he's on crutches. He has trouble moving around, um, and I, and I can't remember what his affliction, his disease is, condition. And he is so brilliant. He is basically running around trying to find a cure for it, and so he allows himself to be infected with these vampire bites. His DNA mingles with them, and that's the whole thing that. The comics make it clear, you know, he's the living vampire, and, and, and because it's a science, it's a sciencey wonky vampire. You know, it's not like they even make a little joke about how crosses or holy water. The guy has the holy well, water. Yeah, the guy in the uh, the detective brings in yeah, the holy he, water. Al yeah, I that. yeah, Al Madrigal was so good in this movie as the funny detective. He was great, and he, he was, was on the, one of the highlight for sure. Yeah, he was great. He was he was one of the highlights of the movie. Every time he was on screen, I thought he stole every scene but, he was in. You know, I think everybody did a good job acting, even though the plot and the editing probably wasn't there for me overall. But the performances I, I were so good. I mean, I don't know. It's just there was some stuff I did not like about Morbius. Sure. Well, what I was going to say, though, the thing that makes him a unique vampire in just the history of vampires in, in media is that because he does the little, he gets he gets the vampires, a certain kind of vampire mixes in his blood and it cures him, makes him strong, but also makes him have this quench for human blood and he's a vampire, but he's a living vampire. It's all science. It's It's you know, science, it's science, comic book science to where he's not the type of vampire to where he has to like hide from the sun and like to sleep in a coffin or anything. Like, it's not like he's undead. He just, 
he injected himself. Is he the CDC on this? Right. He, yeah. <laughs> He's not the undead. He is a living vampire, you know? And so, but the things I liked about it um, really well, there's a couple of really cool action sequences in it, I thought, that um, um, were more horrific and uh, than I would than you would normally see in one of these types of movies that I thought was really cool. The whole throwback to the callback to Bram Stoker's Dracula, where Dracula's on the Decatur, uh, the ship, and he's coming into London and he eats everybody on the voyage. They yeah, that was very, yeah. Yeah, they do a variation of that here, which is really cool. That's like the first uh, big moment of him becoming a vampire, and he kills all these people. And um, uh, so it, go, it kind of goes from there. And I thought that sequence was great. My only complaint with it and 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 I think this will vary as in terms of like how much kind of your uh thirst for gore and blood goes there is zero blood in this movie and that did get on my nerves a lot because there was a lot there's this one part when he's running and they the implied shit. it a lot too that there is some gore about to pop up and then they just turn the camera away yeah you can just tell they were like no blood the studio was like no blood you can just you know any other film they're like he's running through killing these people on like the, well even the, in the trailer for it like when he cuts his hand you don't like, really see no any blood, blood. Like, yeah. there's that part where he's on the ship and he does this really cool up this guy all the way up him and then he gnashes into his throat and it's awesome it's very cool i was like whoa but there's zero blood. And so there is these moments where I'm like, man, there's, this should be a bloodbath. And so. And that's probably kind of what secretly irritated me when I was watching this, too. Like all those moments, and it didn't have the even practical gore effects or anything. That would make this film a, a ton cooler, in my opinion. But sure. it just didn't sit well with me at the end of the day. And there was a ton of silly sequences in this movie as well like when matt smith's character went to go visit michael morbius in jail and they let him in the cell with them like that wouldn't happen in real life i know but my dis my that would not happen that see that didn't bother me my suspicion of that i know like, i was just like this at the screen i'm like come on I mean, I, 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 I'll give it to you that it's goofy, but that the whole movie's goofy, and like, I, I don't know, I wouldn't. That didn't bother me. I would. I mean, I see what you're and saying. And then they let him it. have like that pack of blood, that packet of blood in his coat pocket, like. Man. Oh yeah, yeah. I, th I did chuckle at a couple of things where he was like, I was just like, this guy is so out of touch with what happens when he gets arrested because he's sitting there and he's like. I need my blood. I need you guys to go to my shit and give me my blood or bad shit's going to happen. And they're just like, what, dude? You're not going to like me when I'm hungry. <laughs> that I can do without. And the most, the craziest thing is in the trailers, they have this moment where it's supposed to be a laugh where he's like, he, he comes in that scene um, and it's, 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 it's a point where I thought that I do feel like there are chunks of this movie that were taken out. That there I were think some, so, too, yeah. I think there's a stronger cut of this movie out there um, that, 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 because there's just certain parts that feel like when, he, when he's following the guys in the hoodie, at first I didn't know what the hell was going on. It's so quick to where he's just like, oh, baby. Yeah, there's like a huge chunk of he's character like, de development taken out of the film, too. He's like, they've got money. So I'm going to follow him. And then I was like, okay, what's going on here? And then he's like, I need your lab. And I was like, okay, this all happened really fast. And I never did. And, and it's like, I'm, I, I think I'm kind of a perceptive person as much as the next person. You no, know, I think that was one of, uh, I think that was the time I used the bathroom when that scene was going on. Because okay. I didn't remember it vaguely, but I remember him already being in the lab. Well, if you remember, one of the big complaints is there are a lot. Now, I understand if you go back and watch any trailers for especially bigger studio films of the past decade or two, longer even probably, um, there will always be a moment or two that isn't in the, the final film. There are a yeah. lot of moments here that are not in the film. and Especially that big Spider-Man poster, too. That, that didn't even... bother me, though, because, again, I kind of just was watching this as a vampire film. I don't care about all those connections. You know what I mean? Like, the MCU gets on my nerves with this type of shit to where, like, I'll be enjoying a movie for, like, two hours. And then all of a sudden, there's a knock at the door. Who's that? Oh, it's 
Black Rock from some <laughs> obscure connection I'm supposed to make 19 movies ago. And I'm like, this is not how you make movies. And you know, Deadpool 2 on Deadpool had the perfect line from the, that timeline continuity in any Marvel film, including the x -Men. Like, what freaking timeline are we in? This shit's confusing. Yeah, this shit's confusing. And I just, I, I wish we'd turn that type of stuff off. It's one of my biggest turnoffs with the MCU and the DCEU, that type of filmmaking to where it's just like, I don't like movies that seem like they solely exist to set up three more movies down the road. It's cheating and it's lame. And it, I think it treats the audience like they're stupid and like they're children to where we're just going to go, oh, like seals. It's like, who cares? The movie sucked. I don't give a shit about 15 seconds of credits. If the movie sucks, what I, I don't care. I just, and I get that a lot of people do care or they wouldn't do it. But me personally, I just want a good movie. I just wanted what I consider to be fun or good. And, and you know, this was somewhere in between there. It, I had a great time with it. Um, and I liked it more after the fact. Now, I got to say, a lot of these movies, these convict movies, lose me in the final act, right? And this one was no exception. This one was no exception. Three fourths of the movie. Had I had a weak third act, in my opinion. Oh, my week. I glazed over and I forgot where I was. I had to get smelling salts to wake me up. I was just like, oh, where am I? Well, the movie's over. Shit. And it's that's kind of what me and my dad were talking about uh, at dinner afterwards. And he was like, yeah, the IMAX experience made it cool with like the yeah. sound and the oh, picture bet. quality. But overall, the third act and the plot was just. The third act, I couldn't even tell you what the hell was going on. I really did kind of glaze over and forget. Um, but what I really liked, uh, uh, but but you know who's really cool and Morbius, and nobody can take his performance away from him? who Jared Harris is really cool in this. Oh, Jared Harris is one of those actors. I don't know if you've seen Chernobyl yet, but oh yeah, of course, yeah, a brilliant. One of the scariest things I've ever seen, and it's not, it plays like a horror movie. It's so scary, and it's brilliant, and it has the same score uh, from the, the the girl, that the woman that did the Joker score won the Oscar. Yeah. I don't want to pronounce her name because I will butcher it. It's Hildor something. Uh, I apologize. But I just, that Chernobyl was awesome. Anyway, Jared Harris is good in anything. And Matt Smith, too, is so yeah. great. I mean, they all really tried in this to me, but... To me, Jared Leto. <laughs> Go ahead, Steve. <laughs> Jared Leto. It's like sometimes he either oversells stuff, like in House of Gucci, where it seems like he thought he was playing Mario from Super Mario Brothers. Or I love him in House of Gucci. You can just—he's uh, no, great. It. He's great. I love it. He makes the movie. <laughs> him and Lady Gaga. I thought, oh, good, great. But it's so over the top, and uh, and that's what made it great. Yeah, and his Joker whether people liked it or not. And I know it's highly divisive. Most people did not enjoy it. Over the top, over the top. This, I was very surprised by how under he, by how much it was underplayed. You know what I'm he saying? He played it straight, yeah. He played it straight. And so it's Jared Leto, of all people, played it straight. And I don't think he necessarily should have been parts of it. Um, there is a lot of tonal inconsistencies in this movie yeah and there's, changes tones a hell of a lot and more like than there's it. that moment in the trailer which also isn't in the movie which is bad where he tries to do the joke and they're like who are you and he says i am venom and then he goes no i'm dr michael morbius at your service terrible not a good joke but then all they do is shorten it in that scene it's the same scene and, and, and he says i am venom and then that's, and that's it. it it's a worse it's so confusing and it's a worse moment and like you know, uh, but but yeah, I'm, I'm picking on the movie. And I'm thinking that was improvised by him too. I but guarantee. This wasn't, it. Like, look, if you like stuff like uh, like, uh, okay, this is where this movie really fits in is stuff from the early 2000s, right? Like yeah, I agree. Van yeah. Helsing, Van Helsing, Underworld, the Underworld franchise, Queen of the like, Damned, huh? Queen of the Damned. Those movies were all critically derided. That, um, but also had a lot of fans and was a hit with some audiences um, to varying degrees. You know, I remember when I saw Underworld, the first one, which is the only one I've seen in the movie theater, I, I leaned over to my friend and I remember saying, so it's the Matrix with vampires. And he's like, yeah, pretty much. And he, I was like, no, okay, I get it. It's a bunch of people in leather moving around all slow motion and techno music and they're just vampires. But uh, yeah, so this fits in with that. And I think before people say, oh, the new superhero movie, no. It is a new vampire movie that, that feels like it is 
aiming for that kind of film that was um, wonky, silly, fun popcorn like movie. A popcorn flick, yeah, for sure. And but I, I I don't think it's a great one. I, I I think that the two now I did before I went back. I've seen the first Venom a few times. And I really like like it. Yeah, the I really one, enjoyed the first Venom. A, a I, lot. I watched yeah. the second one again the day before I saw Morbius just to watch it again. Now, I'd only seen it once. And I had a blast with it, and I think it's a really, for the most part, a good time. I don't think this movie is as near as good as either one of the, either of those two. I agree. Like, I thought Morbius reminded me of 90s comic book films. In Even a bad the first way. Blade, maybe? Yeah. yeah, in a bad way. But I think the Venom movies remind me of 90s comic book films in a good way. I think like, that's a fair statement. And I, and like I said, I liked Morbius a lot more than you, but I still, I'll give you that. That's very fair. Um, um, so I'm trying to think of other things. Oh, you know, I thought the score was pretty cool. I thought the yeah. score was, a lot, I wasn't expecting to care about the score in this movie, but I really thought it was cool. Um, but yeah, it does lose steam before the end of the movie. There are a lot of in a lot of these movies. It's and like, there's are there are a lot of slow parts in Morbius. I was telling my dad about that too. I said, "I'm glad we went to go see it in the theater because at home, I think I would have been on my phone the whole time during it." Maybe so. Yeah, I think this movie will play best on a big screen. And you know what? From the trailers and stuff, I was really worried about the CGI. I thought it was going to look terrible. To be honest, I thought it worked. I didn't. Did you, I thought the CGI in this movie worked. And yeah, it wasn't as bad as I thought. And even with the CGI, and the poster marketing campaign they had was terrible. The absolute poster. worst. Who is in charge of the marketing for Morbius, and how do I apply for that job? Because I, I feel like it's. A, I think it's an entry level job. Whoever had that marketing. Yeah, <laughs> you you think because it was really bad. The marketing for this movie did not help anything. Um, but no, I think there's just a lot. But the movie itself, I think. It's fine. It's serviceable. It's fun. If you like, I the movies, just don't you... think it has any leg power at the end of the day where you're going to be like, you know what? Let's watch Morbius again. Sure. No, I, I think that you're right on that. Like, but if you like stuff like Dracula 2000, Van Helsing, all that stuff that that, that was like studio slick, or even horror. John Carpenter's uh, Vampires, I would. I, you know, I love that. I love that. Movie. I do. I, I loved it, it in the fact that it was really campy fun at the time. I saw that on the big screen. I was 13, yep. maybe. And um, the first Carpenter I saw on the big screen, I was 10. It was Escape from L.A., which was cool. But Vampires, the thing that always pissed me off about Vampires was the movie starts, and you got this badass team that are going fighting vampires. And I wanted to see that movie the whole time, but then they all get killed like 10 minutes into the movie, and I like it. I think it's really cool. I love Cheryl Lee in it. I'm a Twin Peaks freak, so it's really cool thinking of Cheryl Lee in another role like that. And the Baldwin's great. James Woods is great. James Woods, but uh, uh, James Woods, but like uh, the James Woods is a great actor. Um, questionable human. Really being. great on Family Guy. Oh yeah, I remember that. But um, <laughs> uh, vampires. I always just wanted to see the team. I wanted to go back and see a prequel movie where they just fucked up a bunch of vampires for an hour and a half and they lived. That's what I wanted to see, you know. But but it's a good time. It's nowhere, and that's much more pulpy than this. And that is oh, yeah. that's a that's a hard R film. This is a soft PG thirteen. Uh, and I Which do is think really when, surprising for Morbius too. When I was watching it and having fun with it, as I was. You know, just the scenes where like Matt well, Matt Smith is like you know, dancing with himself. Dancing and he's like the Lestat. He really chewed it up. I yeah, thought. he's and he should be. He, he this is a hammy movie. He should be hamming it up to eleven. And like well, so, that's the thing. Like you wouldn't expect that from Matt Smith. You wouldn't expect that from Jared Leto in Morbius. But Matt Smith is the one that's over the yeah, top in it. Yeah, and, and Jared Jared Leto is the one that's like, oh, I'm going to underplay this. So I'm like, okay, now of all times, Jared, it's this one should be up. But no, uh, <laughs> Matt Smith is great in it. But if this would have been just R rated, think of all the stuff that's in it. And how much more fun that would be if we had all the blood, if we had Matt Smith just turning loose, you know, and, 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 you know, I just think that it, 
I think the movie did itself a disservice with the lack of blood in those cool, otherwise cool sequences and stuff. I think it kind of sold itself out a little bit. It lacked um, the bite for sure. Yeah, it did. Uh -huh, pun intended. <laughs> but no, I do think that um, uh, there's a writer that I like that I follow on Twitter named Richard Newby, who writes for the Hollywood. Yeah, Report. I follow him too whenever I log on. I yes. really love him. He's a great guy. He's a great writer. And he wrote an article about. Uh, the whole situation I was talking about, about how people for months decided this movie sucked before it came out. And you had these other people that were saying, no, it's amazing. The Batman sucks. And it's like, ah! Right. And, but, and people that have not even seen the movie and probably won't, uh, they just sit on Twitter all day. And it's crazy to me, the disingenuousness of it. And I just, I would And that's why I'm not logged on Twitter in months. Sure. No, I don't blame you. It's a cesspool of, of filth. <laughs> no, but I, I think that um, at the end of the day, as uh, someone that has written many a bad review, I have no qualms to write a bad review about something. But don't be a dick. And especially don't tear a movie apart in ways that are unfair, especially if you've never made a movie or if you don't really understand how they work. And I'm not trying to be an asshole or a gatekeeper. I'm talking to the assholes when I say that, because it's always some guy that, that will then say 15 things that make you realize one, he's seen about seven movies. All have people Facebook filmmaker who only makes fan films that can think they can just rip a movie apart. <laughs> sure. It's just, I just don't understand this desire to shit on everything. And, um, you know, I would rather go on and on about something that I think is cool or be at the very least be fair. Like, uh, you know, there's a lot of movies that I really don't like, but I, I just it just turns me off to be a dick. And I just think that with everything going on right now in this world, do we really need to be dicks about, uh, you know, superhero comic book movies and stuff? I just don't think there's a point. It's just to be a bitter asshole. <laughs> so yeah, and I know you didn't enjoy the post credit scene in Morbius, but I kind of did like uh, sure. the Vulture's new suit that he had. It on. looks cool. He yeah. looks really cool, didn't he? It? it just didn't seem to fit. It's just one of those things where it just seemed yeah. to come from a different movie. And like and especially after this was filmed way before No Way Home, and then Keaton magically appears and then blames it on Spider Man. Uh, yeah, which is weird because they haven't really met Spider-Man in their world. So I don't know why Morbius is like, this is a good idea to go fuck with this guy I've never met. You know, it's yeah. like, ah, OK, he's never done shit to you. <laughs> but it's like, uh, but um, uh, shoot, I lost my train of thought there thinking about that post credit scene. Um, <laughs> but oh, oh, Daniel Espinosa, the director, he did. He's done a lot of different things. I've never seen his movies. I own Life on Blu-ray and I haven't seen it. I've heard That's people say the Han one in. Uh... Is that in the Pattinson one? No, Life has um, uh, Jake Gyllenhaal. It's a, it's, it's like oh, Alien. that one. Okay, it's yeah. a sci-fi horror film. And uh, that was uh, actually pretty cool, but it feels like it came out twenty years too late. Sure. It, well, I heard yeah, it's got it's a lot. I love like Alien. That. Yeah. The Alien franchise is one of my favorite film franchises, if not my favorite. Well, I'll just say this: the first. Alien is maybe my favorite it, it movie. It felt more like a Roger Corman movie that came out 20 years too. Oh, sweet! Uh, Roger yeah. Corman, who just had a birthday the other day. Uh, uh, um, but yeah. Um, and he also did this movie with Denzel Washington called Safe House, which I've actually also never that seen. That one was pretty cool too. And a lot of people really say that they really like those movies. And, you know, he was talking about how, you know, a lot of these movies come with big ideas and a lot of people have those ideas. So it's hard to be... It's hard to get a true director's vision out there. That's not exactly and how it's worked with the studio. Yeah. On and that's all these like this. That's it's all almost these like having movies. 10 different engineers on the same project. You're just going to get too many hands working on it at the end of the day. And sure. this is what's going to come out. And I'm not naive. I get to the studios. There's all, anytime anybody hears reshoots now, they think, oh my God. And I'm like, dude, all, that's how these movies are made. All these movies have reshoots. Uh, all these movies are kind of made by committee, but they're also directed by somebody who is the director. So it's kind of like you get some of them and you get some of this. Um, and I, I, it's just how they're made. I don't think yeah, it's the creative it's, process. Then, I, mean, like, I don't think it's either good or bad. I just think that it has produced some really good films. And then that method has also produced uh, travesties like Justice League. Uh, the 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 theatrical and not the Snyder cut. We're talking yeah. about the weeded yeah. cut. Yeah, the Snyder cut is the exact opposite. If you don't like the Snyder cut, that's also fine. But that is very much one guy's vision of this world. 
um, which I'm more into that. Like I'm more I into am too, yeah. seeing like Matt Reeves is the Batman than I am seeing um, the next MCU movie. I am really excited about the next MCU film though. I'm really excited about Doctor Strange. I just want it to, but I'm excited about it. Not for the reasons most people are. I'm excited about it because it's a new Sam Raimi movie. That looks like it has some of his trademark horror stuff in it. it Especially with the techniques with the camera angles. So, and I'm hoping that with someone like Raimi, like with Chloe Zhao, they get I finally watched Eternals all the way through. I like that more than most people. It's I know you do. It's a very interesting film. We should talk about it sometime. It is kind of a mess. There is it is a little bit of a mess, I thought. And some characters seem like they're in different movies than other characters. Like Barry Keoghan, I, I'm pretty sure he showed up thinking he was in a different movie. I'm pretty positive. I think he showed up thinking like he was the Flash. Actually, yeah, it's a. He's just his tone is. I usually I love him. I love him. I but, love him too. Yeah. But uh, but anyway, um, yeah, you get that with Chloe Zhao, Zack Snyder, Matt Reeves. You get a lot the their own vision for better or worse, and sometimes the fans balk. I don't think Eternals is a necessarily bad movie. I just think that the that the people in the MCU have come to expect a certain thing, and when they yeah. don't get it, they cry. Um, and you know, and that is true, also. Yeah, I saw that when I came out in the press screening for Eternals. This oh, one lady in front of me was like, "You know, I hate it when these indie directors uh, come to the MCU," and I'm like. Do you know oh, that? Do you know that ninety five percent of the MCU directors were indie directors to begin with? Yeah, like we're talking about John Favreau, who made Ryan Wade and Stringers, and yeah. then Anthony and Joe Russo, who can he started on Arrested Development and Community before they even got to the MCU. Ryan Coogler. <laughs> prestige guy you know i mean great filmmaker a filmmaker's filmmaker for black panther i mean you know it's just it's it's always like that and and it's just like moon knight right now benson and uh, moorhead did the last episode that i saw i'm not sure if they're going have they directed all that no. i don't know i didn't keep an eye on who directed them all because I I do was, know. I don't, i'm powering through all four episodes pretty quick i see i i I see people complaining about Moon Knight, too, and I'm so surprised. I think it's where Marvel right now is getting into more darker territory in general. I'm enjoying it I think it they're more. treating pe- more um, people of color and minorities with respect, too, which sure. may piss off a lot of fanboys. I mean, you hate to see it, but it happens. Well, there's a huge contingent of racist fanboys out there. I mean, yeah. I, you know, you can throw that shit at me if you see this and don't like it and call me some woke tard, but you just sound like an asshole when you talk like that. And nobody wants to hear that shit. I'm sorry, but nobody cares what a bunch of incels think. I don't. Uh, and as a matter of fact, I kind of enjoy it when they get pissed off. Uh, so whatever. I know what you're on the wrong side of things if you're constantly like, oh, but Robin's white. What? He's a comic book character. What are you talking about? You know what I mean? Just that whole attitude. It's gross. It's gross. It really is. And it if happens all the time. If you're, you need to see. I mean, it's bigger than a comic book or a movie. If you're genuinely upset that like a person of color or a, a gay a LGBTQ plus person or a woman is in the lead in some way, if it's bothering you, the problem is you, my friend. You know, it's just it's not that movie. You know, it is you. You need to take a long, serious look at yourself, and, you know, and get off the internet. <laughs> but yeah, but um, no, that's pretty much, I couldn't really say too much else about Morbius uh, in general. It's just, um, it is it is what it is. It's pretty cut and dry, straightforward vampire yeah. film that harkens back to that kind of slick, action-y, early aughts, late 90s kind of thing. If that sounds like fun, go see it. It's not the best, but it's a good time. If that doesn't sound like fun, stay home. <laughs> and overall, I think at the end of the day, I would give this a one and a half out of five stars. Ooh, that is low, my friend. I am going to, um, I enjoyed it. I don't think it's great or anything. I don't think it's terrible at all. Um, I think there's a lot to like there. I think there's a lot that could have been better. I'm going to give it a, if four means excellent and five means like perfect and three means good, then two would be fair and one would be poor. Uh, I would give it a two and a half. And I think that's pretty fair. I think two and a half is. Yeah, but right you describe it, I think that would be fair for your rating as well. Yeah, sure. 
Definitely, man. Yeah. Yeah. All right, everybody. Yeah. Thank you for joining us again tonight on another episode of Reviews from Hell.